Hey everyone, this week we are going to be going over how to pull StatCast data and make some basic analysis. Now, um, Bill Petty, who is very frequent in R, made a ton of amazing packages to use for pulling StatCast data. Fan graphs data, baseball, baseball reference data, so on and so forth. Um, so in this specific instance, we're going to use some of his functions to scrape StatCast data. So how we do that is we will install DevTools and call DevTools in the first two lines. That way we can install from GitHub instead of install from packages. And I have Bill Petty's GitHub page on there. Feel free to check it out if you want a great resource for pulling baseball data. So we'll call DevTools in the library. And then we'll install it from GitHub. And again, this will take some time, a lot of data. And uh, we can see that, you know, data is pulled. So now we have it in GitHub from this GitHub page. Uh, it may prompt you with saying, you know, you may need to update packages. Feel free to say yes or feel free to say no. It gives you those options. But We'll get right into it. As you can see, I already have code written. Um, this is a quick, quick and easy way to pull it, and I have it separated by dates in a data frame. So, what we're going to do is show you how to get that data from each week because there's a limit on the savant data that you can pull of a given time. So, how we do that is you can still call a library if you want, but another way to call a library is saying the library name baseball R and then double colon to indicate what function you want to use from baseball R. In this case, scrape stat cast savant. And the reason why I have so many dates is because stat cast only goes through 10 days at a time, or at least the function does, or 40,000 observations, whatever comes first. So you want to kind of just create multiple data frames of the StatCast data and put it into a data frame. And then I'll show you later how to combine it into one big data frame. So this will obviously take a lot of time. Um, it goes through start date, end date. So I went from the beginning of the regular season to the end of the regular season. Um, basically one week at a time except for the beginning of the season since it started on a weekday and then you can select player type batter pitcher and then there's other functions um, feel free to look into it again on this github page you can check it out so we'll run through all of this and again it'll give you uh, this kind of message that's saying it's collecting data grabbing data it will take some time now that we have all the data ready to go from each week of the season we can simply create another data frame where it uh, combines every row of the data frame by doing an R bind as you can see right here and essentially that, that combines each row as long as they have the same columns since each week of the season has the same columns we can run this and again it will take a minute it is a lot of data so I run that and then since there are 729,793 observations, I like to create a smaller data frame so I can kind of see what the columns are, what, what data I'm looking at. So what I do is I'll say Savant OBS and the data frame we call it, which is Savant Data 19. And then the square brackets indicate row column and we'll do sample number of rows within the number of rows call. We will also again call savant data 19. And then we want to sample 10 rows. And then outside of the parenthesis comma to indicate we want to sample 10 rows in savant data 19 into this column. So we'll run that. And we got 10, and it gives us a lot of information here. Um, feel free to remove the columns with NAs, so on and so forth. But on Baseball Savant's page, there will be a CSV documentation that shows 
what each of the columns mean so feel free to check that out great great beneficial resource so now we're going to figure out two ways to, a few ways to write this to either a csv file or a database now we can either write a csv or write to a database so i'll show you both ways so we can write to a csv pretty simply by saying write csv we want the savant data 19 and we'll call we'll say savant hitting data 19 dot csv and then we don't want row names because that'll be create an unnecessary column so we'll run this i won't run it but make sure you do run it to write it to your um working directory and then what i'll do is i will remove the savant data data frame and replace it with the csv that i wrote so i'll say savant data 19 it's time to say read.csv savant getting data 19.csv and we'll say strings as factors just in case if our strings do create factors which we don't want at this current moment in time so we'll run this takes a little bit of time now we see that our data frame is there it is present with after reading the csv file now i'm going to show you how to write to a database file and create a database file so first we'll do install packages of either r sql lite and install our packages of dbi and again i won't run them but make sure you do run them to make sure they're installed on your machine and then we'll call a library of both of them so r sqlite and dbi run those make sure they're loaded in so how we do this is we'll create a db so we'll say db db connect so we'll connect to a db and we'll, we'll call sqlite and then we'll assign a db name and we'll say uh statcast and refer to it as an sqlite so we'll run that now we have a db database set so now we can write to a table so we'll say db write table assign our connection which is the db our name which is we'll say statcast hitting and then we'll do refer to the data frame that we want to write to the table so savant data 19 and then we want to overwrite it just to make sure so overwrite equals true and then again no row names so row names equal false run that it'll take a little bit um given your machine but it's writing to a database table and for me it's done so we're good to go there now we can get to see if it works we can write a query through sql to see if the data actually went into that database how we achieve that is we'll say db get query from the dbi package our con which is our connection um our connections db and we'll write a sql statement so we'll say select star which is all observations from since we called it statcast hitting statcast hitting and then i only want the first five observations so i'll say select all observations from statcast hitting the first five observations and it will give us the first five observations as you can see here so cool stuff different ways of doing it i highly recommend if you do add multiple years if you add say the 2019 postseason if you add previous years from 2015 to 2018 write to that sqlite database it will be able to store that information easier and much cleaner and you can still figure out ways to get data 
through writing SQL queries. Or what I'm about to show you is you can also do it through dplyr. Once again, I'll show you to remove the statcast data, and then we'll create another statcast data. So savant data 19. And again, we'll write another get query to select every observation. So our connection's the database, and we'll say select star, which means select all observations from statcast hitting. Give it a minute to load, because it is pulling a lot of observations. And you can see the data is there once again. So now we can go into some dplyr code. So we can achieve this through dplyr. And how we get the dplyr back, which is what I recommend, is we call tidyverse. Which again, you could also call dplyr, but we call the tidyverse package by either installing it and calling it or just calling it through library. If you haven't, haven't installed already, Please do by doing install packages, uh, as you can see above. So we're essentially going to do the same thing as row 108 here, where we write a query. So instead, we're going to do savant data 19, since that's the data frame. Piping operator indicate that we want to continue our code, and then we'll do a slice, which selects the first five rows of our data set. And you can see first five rows of our data set was selected. We can go through some basic code and some basic analysis. So what we'll do is we'll see how many home runs were hit by each player on pitches that were 95 or more miles per hour. So how we achieve that is we'll say Savant Data 19, indicating the data frame, and we'll say select, and we'll do player name, uh, events, and then we'll say launch speed, i.e. exit velocity, and then we'll say release speed, i.e. pitch velocity. And again, another piping operator. We'll create a filter, and we'll say events are limited to home run, and then We'll say release speed is greater than or equal to 95. We'll continue on, group by the player name. Continuing on, we will do a summarize. And we'll say home runs equal N which N referring to, in this case, N with the parentheses around it refers to the count of home runs by each player. And then we'll do exit velocity. We'll say average exit velocity on home runs. And we'll say mean, which is the average launch speed. And then lastly, we want to see the top. So we'll say arrange descending. So we'll run this code. We can see that the top 10 home run hitters on pitches 95 or more miles per hour are Pete Alonso with 11, Freddie Freeman with 10, Jack Peterson with 10, Max Muncy with 10, Kyle Schwarber with 9, Nelson Cruz with 9, Paul DeYoung 8, Judge, Harper, and Walk, Christian Walker each had 7, and their average exit velocity on those home runs on balls pitched 95 or more miles per hour. All over 100, the smallest being Paul DeYoung at 103, and the largest being Pete Alonso at 111. We can ask other questions like, who hit the best while there was an infield shift? we can achieve that pretty simply. Essentially what we'll do is create two small data frames and merge it and then create a final one. So what we can do is say at bats, again, Savant data 19. This time we'll filter events that do not equal NA. 
as well as we can do infield fielding alignment equaling infield shift. So who hit well against the shift? And then to continue on, we will select player name event and then group by player name summarize and we'll say at bats equal n and in this case n is counting the amount of at bats where there's an infield shift for given players so we'll run all that and we'll just give a quick look see see like AJ Pollock at 158 at bats with the shift Aaron Judge 138 or 139 excuse me Alberto Montesi 128 so on and so forth so now we can create another data frame they'll say shift and again we'll call the savant data 19 piping operator filter this is where I'll say events equal single or events equal double or events equal triple so on and so forth so those hits we will get all of those events by using the or operator and we'll say home run and then as well as infield fielding alignment equaling infield shift and again add the piping operator because we want that data so then we'll again select player name and events and then we'll do a, another piping operator we'll group by the player name again group by player name and then summarize and this time we'll say hits equaling n and counting the amount of hits for players with the shift so see that you can see AJ Pollock had 44 hits Aaron Judge 34 so on and so forth we can create a merge element to combine both the at bats data frame and the shift data frame so we'll say x equals at bats y equals shift and we want to merge them by in parenthesis player name the specific column now to continue our code we want to filter at least 100 at bats in a shift for these players then we want to create a new column so how we do that is mutate and we'll say batting average and create a round element because we want three three um digits and we'll say hits divided by a b's and we'll round to three then we'll arrange it by the top 10 or descending batting average and then lastly we'll do the top 10 observations so we'll run all this we can see that Nick Castellanos had the best batting average with an infield shift um, Hunter Dozier had the second highest batting average. Cattell Marte, third highest batting average. So on and so forth. Um, this is a lot of StatCast data, so there's so much you can go through. Now you've learned how to pull StatCast data. Feel free to add more years, add the postseason. The more data, the better, as they say. And, you know, feel free to explore it. Next week, we will be doing... A little bit more StatCast data, but this time we're going to be plotting some StatCast data. So feel free to tune in next week. Um, like and subscribe to my content. Really putting it out there for you guys. This is beneficial for anyone that wants to learn how to code baseball data.